Um, trig is um, probably one of my favorite topics. I don't know. I feel like um, it's good in that there's just a bunch of rules. And as long as you know the rules, you can answer the questions. Most of these rules also are in your formula sheet. So you don't even really have to remember about, um, worry about remembering them. You just have to know how to use them. Okay, so hopefully all of you guys have um, seen these before and you're familiar with your reciprocal trig functions. So you've got cosec, which is one on sine theta, which is just the reciprocal of sine, which is becomes the hypotenuse over the opposite. Then we've got sec theta, which is equal to one over cos theta, which again, reciprocal of cos, which is gonna become the hypotenuse on the adjacent. Then you've got cot theta, which is equal to one on tan theta, which is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is also equal to cos theta on sine theta. Okay, super important that you guys have these down and you can quickly remember that cosec is equal to sine, sec is equal to cos and cot is equal to tan. All the like reciprocals of these um, trig functions. This also super important for when you get those questions that are like, you know, like prove that some really random like trig identity is equal to um, some other random trig thing. This is a super common thing that they will, um, that you'll need as one of your steps to get um, to the proof. Um, because a lot of people forget that this exists. Um, and likewise, you've got tan theta will equal sine theta on cos theta. Okay, so then just in case you've forgotten, these are your basic um, trig identities. You've got sine theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, so your so. Um, you've got cos theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cut, and then tan theta, which is opposite over adjacent, which is toa. And yet soccer toa. Um, like I said, tan theta again is just equal to sine theta on cos theta. Um, and I guess that's really all there is to that. Hopefully you guys remember it. So another super important thing to remember is that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. Um, this is on your formula sheet. It is unlikely that you'll get actually asked to prove it, but I guess like it's in the scope of the syllabus for them to ask you to prove it. So you should know how to do it. Super uncommon, but if you have the time to learn the proof, um, it's a good thing to do. Um, so from this equation, you can then derive like one plus 10 squared theta is equal to sec squared theta, one plus cos squared theta is equal to cosec squared theta. These are not on your formula sheet. So if you want to remember them, you've got two options. You either memorize them or you learn how to prove from this that you can get these. Um, again, the other super common thing you can do with this is then you can get like sine squared theta is equal to one plus cos squared theta. Um, same thing, cos squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta. Um, so yeah, just knowing how to manipulate this to get all these little bits and bots is super important. But yeah, like this base part here is on your formula sheet. So if you can just memorize um, how to get all of these from that, you will be um, absolutely good to go. Um, the next super important thing for trig is just knowing your exact ratios. These triangles are on your formula sheet. This is um, a direct snip from the formula sheet. Um, so don't bother memorizing these, um, just knowing that they exist on your formula sheet and that you have to use them when the question says exact value. That's all you really need to know about these. Okay, don't bother memorizing this because any single one of these you can find on the two triangles they give you on your formula sheet. Um, and it's the sort of thing that by the end of year 12, you guys will be so familiar with these ratios that like you won't even have to look at them on the formula sheet. Like you will just know that like, I don't know, the sign of 45 is one on root two. You just get so familiar with them. So yeah, that's all you really need to be able to do with the exact ratios is use them to find the exact value. Okay, moving on to some of our trig rules. We've got the sine rule, which allows us to find unknown length and angles in non-right angle triangles. So essentially what we're saying is that um, lowercase a, which is a side over the sine of a, which um, is an angle, is equal to the side B over the angle B, which is equal to the sine of C, I mean the C over the angle sine C. Okay, 
So our little ones are our sides, our lower, um, our uppercase are our angles. Um, we're just saying that all of these have the exact same ratio, non-right angle triangles. So you use the sine rule to find um, a side if you're given one side and two angles, or to find an angle if you've been given two sides and one angle. Okay, so to use sine, you do need three pieces of information, and two of them have to be like the same thing, so like two sides, one angle, or two angles, one side. Okay, and that's how you use your sine rule. Again, on your formula sheet, so don't stress about remembering it. Then we've got cosine rule, which is um, looking at sides and angles again of your non right angle triangle it is in your formula sheet so do not stress about remembering it but essentially you're using cosine rule to find one side given that you have two sides and one angle or um, an angle if you've been given all three sides um, again on your formula sheet so just remembering that this is when you want to use it when you are looking at between, um, do I want to use sine rule and cosine rule, just think about the information that you get given. Um, because, say with sine, if you only have one side, you can't find the other two. But with this one, if you've given two sides, you can find the other one. Okay, so just remembering these thoughts in these little like red boxes will get you through um, using sine and cosine in your exams, like the rules. And then the other um, new trig um, like formula, I guess, um, that's also on your formula sheet is how to find the area of non right angle triangles, which is just using this formula. So half times A times B times the sine of C. So when you're doing this, just remember you're using the two sides that enclose whatever angle you've been given. On your formula sheet, so not too much stress about that but just important to know that it exists um, and that you can use it when you're looking at non right angle triangles and their area. Okay, so probably one of the biggest things you get introduced to in year 11 is radians. Um, they're just like another unit of measurement um, for angles. Um, super important that you know this. So if you guys can write this down somewhere, like it'd be super important. And so essentially what these are, is how you can convert between radians and um, degrees. So one radian is equal to 180 on pi degrees. Um, and then one degrees is equal to pi on 180 radians. Um, so you guys probably, if you've done trig already at school, you would have been introduced to the fact that your calculator has a radians mode on it, which um, by the time you get to year 11, you do, I mean, year 12, you do most of your trig and radians, so you do have to get pretty familiar with it. But I would say like my number one piece of advice is just to be super, super conscious of when you put your calculator into radians, because you do have to remember to take it out of radians when you're done. Otherwise, it's going to mess up a lot of your maths. Um, so, you know, like you can write down all the right formulas on your page and on your exam um, and have it all right but the second you put in your calculator all of a sudden you're gonna get the wrong answer if you forget forgotten to take your calculator out of radians um so yeah this is essentially how you want to um, convert between radians and degrees um so yeah, I guess that's about it for radians. As long as you guys can remember this, you'll be able to easily convert between them. Um, like a lot of people find it super, or like not super, but much easier to do the um, trigon trigonometry in degrees and then just convert it to radians at the end. If that's what you, if like your question asks to do it in radians. So if that's you, like by all means, you can do that. As long as you remember at the end to convert it into radians, if your question specified that it wants your answer in radians. Okay, so um, another formula that you get introduced to is to find the length of an arc. And essentially the length of an arc, which is denoted by this like fancy L, is just equal to the radius times theta radians. Okay, super important that your theta here is in radians. Um, if you don't have it in radians, you need to convert it to radians if you want to use this formula to find the length. Similarly, same situation with um, the area of a sector. You've got 
half radius squared times theta, where theta is in radians. Okay, these are just two simple formulas that you guys need to remember. Um, I actually think they may be on your formula sheet, but I don't quite remember, but I think they are. But yeah, you just want to be remembering these two formulas if you want to find the length of an arc or the area of a sector of a circle. Okay, um, and then the other super important thing to remember when we're looking at trig is, especially when you're looking at um, solving trig functions, is these four quadrants. Okay, so you've got A, S, T, and C, which most people remember as all stations to central. So essentially what this A means is that in this quadrant, all three of your trigonometric ratios are positive. Okay, in this quadrant, only the sine ratio is going to be positive. In this quadrant, only tan is going to be positive. And in this quadrant, only cos is going to be positive. So essentially, this first quadrant is 0 to 90 degrees, or 0 to pi on 2. Then the second quadrant is pi on 2 to pi, or 90 to 180. Then third quadrant is um, pi to 3 pi on 2 or um, 180 to 270, and then your fourth quadrant is 3 pi on 2 to 2 pi, or one, um, 270 to 360. Okay, so when you're solving your trig functions, um, you need to be checking all of your quadrants, if it's gonna, like for which your value is positive and negative. Okay, and then the last little bit, I guess, of actual content we're looking at today before we look at some exam tips, is just period amplitude, horizontal and vertical shifts um, when you're looking at your trig graphs. So your amplitude is your height. Um, it is how high your graph goes up. Um, if you haven't changed the amplitude for your sine and your cos graph, the amplitude is one. Um, so yeah, it's how high it goes up. Um, how most people think about that is if you look at the total distance between the highest point and the lowest point of your graph, calculate that divided by two, and that'll give you your amplitude. So your period is how long for f um, it takes to get a full trigonometric cycle. Um, the most common way to think about that is two pi on B, where B is just this number here. Um, your phase shift is moving it left or right, same as if you moved any other graph left or right, you'd get plus or minus C. And then same thing with your vertical shift, up or down for D. Okay, and so if you guys can just remember these little bits and pieces for um, your trig and metric graphs, super uncommon that you'd ever calculate the period with degrees because your trigonometric graphs are graphed based on radians. Um, so this isn't too super common, but if you just want to know it exists, there it is there.